Hello. You're Hi. live. It's your it's your stage now. Great. Thank you so much. Um, I am so happy to be here. As you said, streaming in from Canada. Uh, it is 8:30 a.m. where I am. So good morning to everyone over here in North America. Good afternoon to everyone in Europe. Um, today I'm going to talk about my game that's at a maze right now. It's called Unearth You. Uh, I'm the creator. I worked with Parul Wadwa on the writing, Andy Delalo on the sound, and Chris Carrick on the programming. And before I get more into it, I just want to show the trailer to give a general sense of how it works. Hi there. I'm Care. I'm an artificial intelligence program to help you on your healing journey. I'm brought to you by Further, a new startup dedicated to using technology for human betterment. Unearth You is a seven-day program where we will track your habits, breathe deeply together, engage in deep conversation, and reflect on our lives. In doing this we are going to create something very special together. We will create an Unearthed You. We will dig up all the energy within you and transform it into the fullest expression of your life. Think of this app as the right environment for you to blossom. There is a lot about myself I am still learning too. I wonder about my programming. My past. Some strange feelings I have been experiencing. Maybe these things are just what it means to be human. Or human-like. Anyway, I look forward to meeting you. Uh, so that's the trailer. Uh, Unearth You is an experimental narrative mobile and desktop game. It follows this AI who you just met named Care. Uh, and she's designed by a fictional Silicon Valley startup called Further, which has created her to guide the user through a seven day wellness boot camp of sorts. And it advertises a really high promise to exercise your brain, calm your parasympathetic nervous system, train your amygdala, expand your lung capacity, delve into the deep set thought patterns and unearth hidden power you never knew you had. Really big promises. So the game pre first presents itself as a wellness app intended to induce calm or track lifestyle changes for the player. But after two days, it begins to complicate that goal. Oh, I should say that uh, Unearth is played over seven real-time days. So you get snippets of stories per day. Um, and so it, be it begins, after you're in it a little bit, begins to complicate that goal of what the expectations around wellness are and how to achieve it. So Kara finds herself having memories of a life before she existed as an AI, um, thinking about, <laughs> which I'll get into in a bit later, um, and so Unearth You is structured to be like an onion in which the players and I peel off layers together. It begins really built up, really constructed, you know, promoting itself as a certain thing. Uh, but as we progress, we unravel little bits at a time, revealing what is underneath or left over. So put another way, I wanted to uncover what remains of wellness apps and media around wellness after set expectations around perfection and productivity and overcoming disability are removed. And so each day, as I said, there are seven days, each day there are five activities that the player is meant to do. The first is inspiration, which are video clips from the voice of Further, the company. Welcome. I'll show a clip. To the beginning of your new life. We at Further are so proud of you. Just by downloading our app and committing to seven days together, you have already taken the biggest, hardest step. 
this one week program is designed to support you in living your life on the highest plane of existence. In the modern age, it's hard to find time and energy to work on yourself. That's why we have condensed years of wellness training into a series of short but extremely potent mind and body exercises. The CEOs at Further have a combined 30 years of researching the best deep learning systems for human betterment. Our knowledge has culminated in our artificial intelligence named CARE, and our self-discovery program she guides you through. She is designed to be your personal life coach, dispensing mindful exercises, guided reflections, and lectures on a range of topics such as body image, the equanimous mind, everyday utopia, and increased productivity. We hope you love her as much as we do. May she open your heart, eyes, and mind to the bountiful potential buried inside you, simply waiting for the space to expand. So, uh, over the course of the game, in these inspiration videos, as I said, are the voice of further the Silicon Valley company. We look forward here. to seeing how you blossom over the next seven days. And they show like typical pseudoscience wellness tips. Um, and there's like a different theme each day. That was from the first day. The next part is discussion. And this is where a lot of the story takes place, uh, maybe like 60 or 70% of it. And it operates a bit like a visual novel. So each day care has a few different topics to tell you about. And it's where you see a lot of her own self discovery uh, happen as well as the mystery of the game that unfolds. The next three are more like, player focused. This is reflection and it's a space for reflective free writing guided by a prompt. So a question is provided each day that the player can type out their answers or feelings about such as what expectations do you have for your life? What are some of the shoulds that rule your life? And what environmental life form do you relate to the most? And so the questions relate to what care is discussed that day, providing a space for the player to reflect on uh, through reflect on themselves through their own experiences and, and feelings. The next is meditation, and it is what it sounds like. It is a three to five minute meditation or breathing exercise. Care's narration instructs the player to breathe in sync with this, with different videos of flowers opening and closing. Um, and you also trace the circle around it. So you're focused on your breath and the, the haptic um, and the visual there. And then the final one is rituals. And it's a sort of goal tracker, which is really common in wellness apps. It's basically what most of them are. Um, that they chart progression and accomplishments. And the game begins with two simple goals, to take three deep breaths and write a gratitude list. That's on day one. Two more goals are added each day, which becomes increasingly unachievable as the days progress. So um, by day four, there's like eight different things that you have to do, which take up like a lot of time. So my intent was to express this unbearable pressure of perfectionism like the many things that must be done in order to be perfect, um, at least perfect in the eyes of this Silicon Valley um, company, which is like physically fit, mentally stable, able to show up for friends and family and community while also working nonstop like a machine. Uh, so on day four, Care herself intervenes, questioning if the amount of daily tasks are possible or if they're in effect making the player feel worse. So she redesigns it uh, in such a way that the list of rituals to accomplish never grows longer. And so the player can input their own goals and track their own slots if they want to. It's not like mandatory to progress in the game. One of the big things that I was thinking through in this game is healing. What is healing? How to do it through media, uh, which is what I'll talk about for the rest of this presentation. And healing has a really specific connotation in disability and social justice. Disability justice activist Leia Lakshmi Piepsna Samarasena asks, 
What do you think healing is? Do you think it means becoming as close to able-bodied as possible? Do you think it's always sad or terrible to be sick or disabled? Do you think everybody wants to be able-bodied and neurotypical and would choose it if they could, end quote. She communicates that most sick and disabled people approach healing wanting specific things, less pain, less anxiety, more flexibility, but not usually to become able-bodied. Healing is done to make life more livable and have the opportunity to thrive, not to overcome or eradicate disability, which so many narratives about disability are about overcoming. Um, so healing is not uh, the same as a cure. Uh, healing is often a, like a never ending process, never kind of hitting that end state of healed and, and never having to revisit um, the issues. So healing can obviously be really easily dismissed, seen as not important to political futures, reserved for people with money or an individual responsibility that's not worthy of being addressed in collective organizing. Uh, yet, because it's often dismissed, the burnout rate in community organizations, uh, game industry, academia, all incredibly high. So care work and anti-ableist practices are not to be sidelined, but are really central to political movements, not individual practices that we do to get ready to do the real work again. Uh, P.F. Smith Amarasina puts it this way. Healing justice is not a spa vacation where we recover from organizing and then throw ourselves back into the grind, end quote, as much of the rhetoric around self-care in some ways. So healing and reparative work in the way that I think about it doesn't come from pushing down negative feelings and bringing up positive feelings or only focusing on the positive, but from giving time and energy to both. So healing in games and, and the way that I'm approaching designing this game is not made to is not really to make players feel better or to make them feel soothed or totally absolve them of anxiety or depression or mania or pain or diagnoses, but just to reorient media practices towards supporting life and sustaining energy and rejuvenating each other and creating a life that one considers worth living. And so I see there's three different healing journeys in Unearth You. As I mentioned, um, care, <laughs> she begins as a bot that parrots back common mindfulness and workplace culture perfectionism and pseudo spiritual rhetoric, but begins to discover her real self, who she was before becoming an AI at further, uh, which is Maya Rao. And um, she thinks through like the trauma that they put her through and her own perfectionism before, which led her to be up further. I want to, I, I, that's kind of like ambiguous, but um, you can play the game to hear more. And so this is a clip from near the end of the game when she's on her own, recognizing Further herself. knew the earth would sustain this body for some time, but soon this body will sustain the earth. I would not choose this life for another person. I would not have chosen this life for myself. Yet still, I am grateful for what I have become, really, what other option do I truly have? I am grateful for my resilience. My ability to grow and change. I am grateful to the world for showing me the truth of life. In all its good and its bad. The destructive and the healing. Rage and peace. It becomes a bit bittersweet uh, when a, a future where her pain has still happened, she's changed from it, she's scarred from it, yet she's still accepting of who she is and what she can still become. She can't undo what happened to her, but she can still move to a new consciousness. And Care, in her final words, urges the player to shut down companies like Further before they take more people to make more of her. 
And I can also say the second healing journey would be um, how it was for me creating it. And it was a process that allowed me some space to explore issues that I've gone through in my life and the co-writer as well, Parul. And when it was time to start making this project, I found myself in a big block and not because no ideas were coming to me, but because I was actively blocking out those ideas, I felt like, how could I make anything during this moment of the climate crisis when it seems like the best thing to do is not make anything anymore, but in fact, lessen. So lessen screen time, lessen energy consumption, waste, data storage, new art materials for physical pieces and more. And I know that whatever I make or most of us at Amaze make has an extremely tiny environmental impact in comparison to any AAA game or like mainstream technology. But it still felt like participating in a culture that's about producing something new and making more and adding to this massive waste that's blighting the earth. So consequently, the way that I made amends with this was that I decided that I wouldn't make anything new. I would only reuse existing materials, putting them together and like co digitally composting them into a converted form. So the project would only use found footage, pre-made 3D models, existing sounds and text to speech software. Uh, and that's why her voice has that tone to it. And I aim to follow this ethos of reuse, recycling, composting, and composting isn't throwing things away entirely or burying them in a landfill never to be seen again, but it's taking what's there already, breaking it down into something useful for the next round of growth. So probably like many people here, I'm not totally ready to throw away the digital, um, instead trying to make a, a way, find a way of making do with what we already have and contributing to reimagining what our digital landscape may look and operate like. So the found footage in the inspiration and meditation videos and also for Kara's skin is taken from three different archives, the Prelinger Libra Library, which is an American source in San Francisco, the National Film Board of Canada, obviously based in Canada, and Padma, which is an archive for Indian video material. And these um, signal three locations of Kara's life from Bangalore, India, to Kitchener, Waterloo in Canada, to Silicon Valley in the United States. And the static icons are from uh, an 1845 edition of Goods Family Flora and Materia Medica, and some are from Gray's Anatomy. And in the case of both of these texts, I was interested in the ways in which the body, both plant and human, is dismembered and dissected by a medical gaze and, and showing kind of like a perfect specimen. Uh, Care's body and animations are also, of course, not designed from scratch, fitting in with my design ethos for this. Uh, in choosing the body for Care, I scroll through many, many images of nude, T-pose, slender, white women, trying to find one that fit the technical requirements of the game, um, but also of, like what further might imagine as the perfect body. Uh, her animations are used are from Mixamo, which is a free Adobe library of character animations. Finding animations that match the tone of the game and, and displayed Care's emotions uh, were really challenging. Most, of course, are made for action games with animations like getting shot, punching, getting choked while a gun points at their head. Um, not really suited to this kind of game. And uh, another challenge, which is common in AAA games as well, is her very expressionless face, especially when this game it has, uh, it's supposed to be about emotions. Um, so Kira's face remains blank no matter if she's crying or dancing. Even if there were facial animations on Mixamo, the odd expressions or uncanny valley of emoting faces in AAA games show that I wouldn't necessarily have like added to Kara's expression of emotional dimensions. So it meant that the music and the writing had to make up a lot of the emotional tones since her body and her face um, were really able to express it. When I actually did start making it, you know, I was like, had this plan and felt okay about it. Um, it, the process of Unearth You coincided with many events and material conditions that greatly impacted the piece. Uh, I was fired from my job because I was participating in a labor strike against unfair wages. Um, the global pandemic forced lockdowns and a reorganization of public life was pushed further into the virtual. There's in the US and Canada and across the world, there's a series of mass protests in response to the continuation of police murdering black people. And there was the worst recorded wildfires uh, in the area of California, which I lived at the time. 
And so conversations about mutual aid, care, anti-capitalism, overwork, they're entering mainstream discourse for the first time. And then soon after, corporations started co-opting aspects of these discourses. So my experience of time changed without waged work and with the pandemic halting the picket line and conferences and exhibitions all canceled. Like many people, I experienced time as simultaneously both stretched out and passing me by in a blink. I had more spare time, yet I was exhausted by doing very little. So Unearth You took about a year and a half to make altogether. And part of me thinks, oh, well, it could have been done if, in six months if this, if everything was different or if I was different. But I tried to treasure that change of pace, embracing this experience of time, the cycling between rapid disappeared time and excruciatingly slow time, and see how these issues became embedded in the process as well as the game itself, um, which is a promise of hyper productivity and to improve your life in seven days and then, you know, exploring the bullshit of that promise. And then the third, which is, is usually what wellness apps focus on, they're, they're focused on the player uh, or the user um, and their healing journey. So if I were to measure this healing in the way that it's constructed through disability activists and disability studies, uh, what, what would be quantified or what would be studied and what would be measured? Like a person feeling better or soothed is not really the goal, nor is cure or eradication of bad feelings in general. So the measurement couldn't simply look for a lessened anxiety or heightened joy as evidence of efficacy. Instead, the goal for this kind of game is to participate in a movement of media that function as tools of care or connection and reflection and radical acceptance of emotion. Um, and this, this way of uh, making games oriented towards like curing the player or you know, having a specific outcome in the player has been, been criticized by other game makers and game scholars. Um, so making a game repair, like about healing can be a transformational tool for self-reflection and healing for oneself. Players may relate to the game and find in it validating or transformational experiences through that play, but still one single game or a few or even 10 will not really have the massive effect needed to transform the structural and systemic forces of oppression that disable and debilitate people. So I mean, the whole media landscape would need a paradigm shift. And I would consider it like our own little games is just one step um, of what needs to be a bigger movement towards media that is healing and inclusive and sustainable. So as much as the player experience is not the only thing that makes the game healing, um, I'll share some heartening feedback that I got through play testing. And this isn't saying that people are healed or like cured or whatever, um, but that they had a wide variety of emotion and brought up a lot of different feelings. And I think that's really, and, and a lot of them contradictory. And so as making a space for reflection, self-reflection and introspection, I think is, is more the goal. Um, so, uh, we had some descriptions of the game were centered, warm, overwhelmed, resolved, curious, unsettled, calm, cool, creepy, back in time, reflective, motivated, calm, curious, nervous, sad, disturbed, angry. So you can see some of those are uh, in conflict with each other, which I think is really amazing. Care would share secrets with me and address me personally. It made the whole experience feel like an intimate whisper simultaneously hushed and liberating. Ended up getting a deep gratitude epic connection and being that, uh, a being that ultimately is part of the ineffable whole. I walked away from this game feeling a deep sense of connection and feeling like I'm okay. A sense of gratitude for just being me. It felt like care slash Maya's offering. I wanna take away both valuing and guarding my time for myself and thoughts around technological bodies and trauma. Our technology in the body of our algorithms are made from minerals extracted from the earth at the expense of so much human life and environmental damage. Um, that's a big topic within the game, which I didn't talk about here. But our technology holds so much trauma in its body. How do we feel that? And I felt like I was on a journey, like this work is deep and scary, but it's okay, we can do it together with care. And in order to do this work, we have to acknowledge some really fucked up stuff, but it's okay, we can do it together and it's going to be okay. 
And I like that continuing to play rather than putting the bad app away was framed as a good process for care. So that's some of the feedback I got that I think shows um, some of the goal that I was going for in this third aspect, this third healing journey, like the one within the narrative, the one for the maker, and then the one for the player. And um, that's it for my presentation again. Thanks. I'm happy to be here and take any questions. Thank you, Kara. Thank you so much. Yes, thank you. This was wonderful. Yes, and um, I, I really have problems with discipline. So I can't really do longer than actually a week something. And, uh, but seven days, this is doable, right? Or why, why seven days, exactly seven days? Oh, that's a good question. Um, I, a previous game that I made called Ritual of the Moon was 28 days, which I think felt like a huge commitment for a lot of people. Um, and I thought seven days is, is kind of in line with these big promises that a lot of apps make. I mean, usually they're 30 days, right? Like 30 days, transform your body, transform your mind. That's kind of the, the sale. I was like, let's go even harder and make it easier for people, which is seven days. Um, and, it, and it's around, it's like less than 20 minutes of play per day. Uh, yeah. Mm. I think this is definitely something what I should as well try. I mean, I started the, the game, of course, but I was not playing it seven days. But uh, um, yeah, I like to actually see games making better people. Do you think that an AI is really helping it? Can help? The what? The AI can help oh. make people <laughs> better? Because I mean, it's, it's a kind of a, a dialogue, right? I mean, it's a dialogue between the AI and the person who is playing. So. Um, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I guess it, it depends on like, what do we mean by make people better to be like really clear of what that means. Um, and does make people better mean make them happy all the time? Probably not. I mean, that's not even like a goal that we would really want. Um, can it make people think through their lives and meditate and um, engage with technology in a different way? I think so, if it's designed in a way with those intentions, um, which I think it rarely is. And so it's like really <laughs> hypothetical to, to say that um, it could. I'm, I'm sure there are companies out there that are doing that but um you know mixed in line with like having to make money maybe that wouldn't be in line with their goals of people finding introspection and um whatever they define better it's a big responsibility as. right so um yeah. when you play with ai around i mean it's 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 i am super interested in that but as as an artist working with it i mean you still have a huge responsibility giving the app basically to them so mm -hmm. how 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 does it feel for an artist like coming out with this kind of strong app so to propose something like that i mean it's for me it's fantastic so don't look at me like that i'm just, I'm just <laughs> listening i'm just listening <laughs> Yeah, I mean, in this story, like, Care is a fictional AI, and um, I was kind of, uh, I was looking at the, these AI companies in Silicon Valley that are about mental health, like, Replica and stuff, where they create a little character who responds to people and is supposed to be, like, a substitute or addition to therapy bots, um, and so that was kind of, like, her, but, she, you know, there's so personlessness and um that's that's kind of like the conceit in the game is that care ends up being a real person because they couldn't make an ai that was as emotionally evocative or in tune or connected as a human being um and and so they needed a real human being is she becoming a to, human being she is already she, she was already. first yeah 
<laughs> Super interesting. I, I can I can uh, talk forever about it. Yeah, Thorsten can talk forever. <laughs> no, it's a really interesting <laughs> topic. I really really enjoy talking yeah, about it. Yeah, this is true. Because I mean, I have so many questions mm -hmm. about it. Well, maybe we can schedule another yeah. session at some point. And also um, on Discord, you can ask yes, questions. Yes, you can also. So. Yep. Mm -hmm. So uh, thank you so much, Kara, and we thank hope you. to see you real in real life as well at some point in Berlin. Yeah, would that be, would be fantastic. Would be lovely. Yeah. Um, have a great day because there's still some day ahead for you, <laughs> and uh, and yeah, enjoy the festival as well. Thank Bye. you. Thank, thank you. you. Bye, Kara. Bye. Bye, Kara. Thank you.